Good day. Our topic for today are drugs for Alzheimer's disease. For the introduction, Alzheimer's disease is devastating illness characterized by progressive memory loss, impaired thinking, neuropsychiatric symptoms such as hallucinations, delusions, and inability to perform routine tasks of daily living. Major pathologic findings are cerebral atrophy, degeneration of cholinergic neurons, and the presence of neuritic plaques and neurofibrillary tangles, all of which begin to develop years before clinical symptoms appear. This neuronal damage is irreversible, so Alzheimer's disease cannot be cured. Drugs in current use do little to relieve symptoms or prevent neuronal loss. And now for the pathophysiology of Alzheimer's disease. So Alzheimer's disease results from a combination of factors rather than from a single cause. First is the degeneration of neurons. So neuronal degeneration occurs in the hippocampus early in Alzheimer's disease, followed but later by degeneration of neurons in the cerebral cortex and subsequent decline in cerebral volume. Next would be the beta amyloid and neuritic plaques. So neuritic plaques which form outside the neurons are the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. These spherical bodies are composed of a central core of beta amyloid surrounded by neuron remnants. So neuritic plaques are seen mainly in the hippocampus and cerebral cortex in patients with Alzheimer's disease. Next will be the neurofibrillary tangles and tau. So neurofibrillary tangles are a prominent feature of Alzheimer's disease. These tangles which form inside the neuron result when the orderly arrangement of microtubules becomes disrupted in patients with Alzheimer's disease. And tau twist into paired helical filaments that form the tangles. Next will be the apolipoprotein E4. So apolipoprotein E4, long known for its role in cholesterol transport, may also contribute to Alzheimer's disease. Next will be the endoplasmic reticulum associated binding protein or your ERAB. So uh, ERAB is present in high concentration in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. So the high concentration of ERAP enhances the neurotoxic effects of beta amyloid. And lastly, your homocysteine. So homocysteine are elevated in patients with Alzheimer's disease and elevated plasma levels of this are associated with increased risk for Alzheimer's disease. And now for the risk factor in Alzheimer's disease. The major known risk factor for Alzheimer's disease is advancing age. The age of onset is 65 years old or older. So the, after 65 years, the risk of acquiring Alzheimer's disease increases exponentially. The only other known risk factor is a family history of Alzheimer's disease. Being female may be a risk factor. However, the higher incidence of Alzheimer's disease in women may occur simply because women generally live longer than men. Other possible risk factors include head injury, low educational level, production of apolipoprotein E4, high levels of homocysteine, low levels of folic acid, estrogen and progestin therapy, and sedentary lifestyle and nicotine in cigarette smoke. So here are the symptoms in Alzheimer's disease. They are divided into three. We have the mild, the moderate, and the severe symptoms. In mild symptoms, patients will present with confusion and memory loss, disorientation, problems with routine tasks, and changes in personality and judgment. In moderate symptoms, they will present with difficulty with activities of daily living, anxiety, sleep disturbances, wandering, and difficulty in recognizing family and friends. 
and in patients with severe symptoms, they were present with loss of speech, loss of appetite, loss of bladder and bowel control, and total dependence on caregiver. So the prototype drug for Alzheimer's disease is your cholinesterase inhibitors, Dunapizel, or the trade name Aricept. And we have the NMDA or the n metal d aspartate receptor antagonist, your memantine, with the trade name Namenda and Namenda XR. So there are four drugs that are approved for treating Alzheimer's disease dementia. We have the cholinesterase inhibitors, which prevent the breakdown of your acetylcholine by your acetylcholinesterase and thereby increases the availability of your acetylcholine. So we have here the dunepizel, we have the rivastigmine, and we have the galantamine. The fourth drug, the memantine or your NMDA antagonist, blocks the neuronal receptor NMDA and it is used for the treatment of dementia especially for moderate to severe Alzheimer's disease. Again, we have the memantine with the trade name Namenda and Namenda XR. And now for the preparation and administration of the Alzheimer's disease drugs, first we have Donepezel. So Donepezel with the trade name Aricep are given PO with a peak of 3 hours and half-life of 70 hours. Metabolism is by hepatic and is created by urine and bile. Next will be the Rivastigmine with the trade name Exelone. It can be given PO and we have a transdermal. So PO, the peak is 1 hour and transdermal more than 8 hours. The half-life for this drug is 1.5 hour or 1 hour and 30 minutes. The metabolism is by your acetylcholinesterase in the brain. Excretion is by urine and your feces. Next would be your galantamine. Galantamine with the trade name Roxadine given by mouth. And we have the IR and ER tablet. Metabolism is via hepatic with half-life of 7 hours and is treated by urine. And lastly, we have your memantine or NMDA antagonist given by route PO and the peak is 3 to 7 hours and half-life of 60 to 80 hours. Metabolized also in the liver and is treated by the urine. And that's the end of the report. Thank you for listening.